Hey, it's Rassicus here. So, I like the music of Splatoon. It's fun, and I think it really fits the atmosphere of the game. There's something else I like about it, and that is that almost all the music in the game is attributed to a fictional band or musical artist. And the majority of these bands, and the members, have lore or a bit of characterization beyond just what instrument they play. So that's what I'm here to talk about today. Not gonna talk about the story of Off the Hook, the Squid Sisters, or DJ Octavio, just these more obscure band members because I think they need a bit more love. First, I want to mention why I decided to make a video about this. Yeah, it was asked about and requested a few times, and I thought it was a good idea. But also because I feel like if anyone should make a video about Splatoon band lore, it should be me. Why? I'm going to toot my own horn here, I'd say like 75-80% of the band lore that exists I either translated into English by myself, or I had a heavy hand in the translation process. So don't complain if some of what I say is too much like what you read on Inkopedia, because if you go to most of these wiki pages and click that little citation, guess where it leads you. But even if you already are well read on the wiki, I hope I can give you some new info in this video. I will be pulling some more obscure info from the Splatoon album jackets, speculating on the etymology of some of the names of the band members, and give some of my translation notes that I didn't release into the public. Speaking of translation notes, one very important thing I should mention. I will be referring to some of the band members with singular they-them pronouns. Unlike English, Japanese is a language where it's very common to drop the pronouns in a sentence if the context makes it clear who is being referred to. So in Japanese, it's possible to write in third person for a very long time without using any pronouns or gendered terms, and that's what happened in the biographies of some of the band members. I really wouldn't be surprised if all the band members get localized with just he or she, but at the same time I can't really say for sure because in the second art book, singular they does get used. Basically, don't take me using they them as canon proof of this character being non-binary or something, but rather it meaning that this character's gender, or lack thereof, is open to interpretation until we get an official translation. One last thing, I will be giving info roughly following the order of this timeline, which I also translated. It's from Haikata Walker. Here it says the music scene is divided into three waves. Wave 1 being during the time of the first game, which I will be talking about in this video. Wave 2 is during the beginning of Splatoon 2, which I'll cover in the next part. And Wave 3 started around the time of version 3.0.0 of Splatoon 2, which I'll cover in the video after that. And at the very end of that third video, I will be talking about some of the other Splatoon music-related information that I have. Alright, cool? Cool. With that all out of the way, let's dive right in. Squid Squad, the band that started it all. They are a legendary rock band in the Squid world. Before them, Idol and folk songs were the mainstream, but their popularity shaped the current music scene of the Splatoon world that we hear today. Ichiya is the lead singer and guitarist who handles all the songwriting for the band. His name comes from Ichiya Zushi, which is a kind of fermented sushi. He is a selfish inkling who has the temperament of the prodigy, and he never actually learned to read music nor knows anything about music theory. He just makes songs with flashy guitar riffs, but the other band members are quite drawn to his charm. He likes taking walks as a hobby. Namida is the band's synth player, an inkling, and the only girl of the group. Her name likely refers to a kind of wasabi of the same name used by sushi chefs. Namida also means tear. She is a skilled musician who knows some jazz theory. She makes melodies that bring together the songs that Ichiya writes. They say that she really is the craziest one of the band members. She goes by a number of nicknames such as Master Namida, Nami Nami, and the girl from Planet Namik. By the way, that's just how I translated those nicknames. Whenever we get an official localization of Haikata Walker, it might be something different. Murasaki is a sea urchin, drummer, and the youngest of the group. There's a kind of soy sauce that sushi chefs use that's also called Murasaki, which is likely what he's named after because 
sushi theme here in the names. And yeah, it refers to a shade of purple, and this boy is purple. He's super cool and has a lot of energy and potential, but he doesn't use a wide variety of techniques in his performances, and during his drum fills, he just repeatedly hits the snare. His drumming supports and fits well with Ichia, but when it matters most, his sticks, which are made from his own spikes, are always there to lead the way. He's easily moved to tears. Ikan is an inkling, the band's bassist, and he provides some distinctly deep vocals. His name is the same as the Japanese word for a counting unit for sushi. He's the group's oldest member, and at first glance, he seems like just this chill guy, but actually he's incredibly passionate about music. He draws out Ichiya's potential, but he constantly steps away from the band as to him, Squid Squad is pretty much nothing but a fad. On stage, he is expressionless and only makes slight movements. He's the kind of guy who arrives first on stage and is always the last one to leave at the end of a performance. Squid Squad's first album is called Fresh Kids, which released in 2014 of the Mollusk era. Splatoon years are analogous to ours, by the way. Their first single was Splat Attack, which was born from a jam session the band had after a live show. It was originally leaked online unnamed. A lot of the turfing youth downloaded the song to their music players, instantly becoming a standard for battle music, and that helped propel Squid Squad to stardom. It became a hit after catching the attention of Gi-san, who is the producer of Fresh Kids, from a demonstration tape. And a hit it was. Their album topped the Inkopolis music charts for several weeks, and their shows would sell out instantly, and that led to the band members seldom making public appearances because they would always get mobbed by fans. They were responsible for a large chunk of the music we hear in Turf Wars in the first Splatoon game. The album jacket of the Splatoon album gives a few tidbits about these songs. For example, Squid Squad did a live show at Camp Triggerfish, and when they played the song Seascape, it hyped up the audience so much that some just jumped into the lake. Also, apparently when the song Crackin' Up played on the radio for the first time, the cars driving on the Urchin Underpass drove 10 kilometers per hour faster than usual. But after a legendary performance at Starfish main stage, the band broke up at the time of Splatoon 2 with each member off doing their own thing. And we do see where one of those bands members went off to in Splatoon 2, with Econ becoming half of the duo of Dispair. I won't talk about Dispair until part 3, so for now that's all I really have to say about Squid Squad. So on to the next band. <music> Chirpy Chips is a catchy chip toony band, topping the charts in both Splatoon 1 and 2. Although in Splatoon 2 they're not quite as crazy popular as they used to be, they still have a loyal following and are popular in the indie scene. Their popularity is evident in-game, as the design of the Heavy Splatling remix is inspired by them, and if you talk to Mari in Tentakill Outpost, she says that Chirpy Chips is her favorite band. They make music with various retro gaming machines and give flashy live performances. They're known as ABXY in Japanese, which I think is a better name because that's what it looks like it says on the album cover, and this ABXY name seems to reference a Japanese chiptune band called YMCK. Now, the band members. Ryan is a flapjack octopus who plays the bass and is the composer in charge. They're an intellectual and geeky type who likes things that are strange or outdated. Aside from doing things with the band, they make music with their computer as a hobby and quietly upload their own songs online. They prefer there to be a lot of chip y sort of sounds in the band's music. They dislike standing out and honestly don't really like to play music in public. Noiji, which is just the English word noisy, is an inkling who plays the guitar and sings in the band's chorus. With his especially sunny disposition, he epitomizes the band's energy. Previously, he played in a punk band. The name of this band is Body Body, which is a Japanese onomatopoeia that describes things that are energetic or repetitively loud. It might be localized to something else, I figured I'd mention it though. He's on good terms with the bass player, Ryan. He talked to Ryan and formed the band back when Ryan was mainly just a composer. Something he likes is big vending machines, and he has an uncontrollable urge to run when he sees a slope, particularly ones that go downhill, so he likes to run off a lot. 
Shikaku is a crab of an unspecified species and the drummer of Chirpy Chips. They are the oldest of the group. They had spent a lot of time playing with other bands, and their musical techniques are very reputable. They're not the kind to cut through everyone else and take the lead, as they're always supporting the band with a staple performance. Basically, they're easygoing and always cheerfully watching over the band members, but about once a year they quietly snap and get crabby. Okay, translators note about that last sentence. It would be a more direct translation to say Shikaku blows a fuse, like actually gets mad rather than just getting crabby. But in Japanese, they threw in crab puns in the last sentence, so I did too, and I'm kind of proud of what I did there. Haruko is a sea anemone vocalist who is in charge of the band's visual. Remember when the English-speaking fanbase collectively agreed her name was Glenna or something? Anyways, her actual name is Paruko, and I think it's a pun on parurando, which is a music term for singing in a speaking style, and ko, which is just a typical feminine name suffix. This singing in a speaking style description is fitting because she's described as singing in a low energy way, although her voice gets more energetic in her newer songs like Blitz It and Wave Prism. She moves peculiarly while singing and talks in a loose way between songs, which is secretly popular among fans. Her singing voice in the songs are altered, and she does a lot of lip syncing during live performances. Because she doesn't feel as motivated as the other members, she is often late for practice. She coexists with a yellowtail clownfish on her head, but it's dying of neglect. Haruko's clownfish dying of neglect is something I mentioned in my iceberg video, and here I want to talk about it again. So back then I said this was alarming because clownfish and Splatoon are sentient and intelligent, with how Annie's clownfish Mo would say rude things to you in the first game. I had some people counter this with the idea that clownfish are probably like pet parrots, like they're not actually intelligent, they're just mimicking things. Now, I thought about the parrot concept too, as it would be less of a headache if this was actually the case. But I have reasons to believe that clownfish, and these other small sea creatures that haven't changed much physically, are intelligent. The first piece of evidence I have for this lies in Craymond, the emperor shrimp living on Flo's head. He's not a clownfish, but this is another tiny sea creature who doesn't talk a lot. In the second art book, it's mentioned that he came to Flo on his own accord because she was very lost on a trip and he wanted to help her get around. That's a level of reasoning and motivation on Craymond's end that takes some actual brain cells. Secondly, Mo and Craymond have separate personalities and use language in a way that the bigger species that they've latched onto would not say. Even though Mo seems to blurt things out, it's not random, it's relevant to the situation at hand, and definitely not something he would have learned from Annie. And maybe he's just yelling because he's small. And lastly, to disprove the idea that clownfish are not pets, there's a developer interview from 2015 where Hisashi Nogami was asked in reference to Mo, so he's not a pet, but a symbiote, and he says, that's right. So there's an explicit distinction between pets and symbiotes in the Splatoon world, and these relationships may be voluntary. So that leads me to question, what the hell is going on between these two? Paruko is neglecting this clownfish to the point of it nearly dying. Like, that should be illegal, but nobody gives a shit. So why doesn't this clownfish just leave? Does this clownfish have Stockholm Syndrome? Has she gaslight gatekeep girl boss this clownfish into staying with her? What the fuck? Alright, up next, High Tide Era. Not confirmed, but I would not be surprised if the Splatoon devs base their outfits on Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day. They are a piano-centric band that's active in the indie scene. The Squid Research Lab says that the band's name refers to both the full and brimming nature of the group's sound and also the ecological realities of the world that they live in. It started off with the pianist who played out in the streets to their own accompaniment, but they were later joined by a drummer, and finally the guitarist, creating a trio. They've garnered attention across various subcultures, and in a famous record store, people can be heard giving reviews of them like calling them a maverick of classical music, and like, if you're tired of listening to regular old guitar rock, give this a listen. 
Apparently, in universe, the fans of High Tide Era are called Air Aliens, so like Era and Alien. Taka is a double-lined facelier who plays the piano and sings. Taka's name likely comes from the Japanese word for the double-lined facelier, Takasago. They're the band's frontman who makes the songs. They started playing piano at the age of four and received an academic music education, but got tired of that world and took to the streets instead. Rather than being artistically motivated, Taka is driven by a desire to be fawned over. They don't show it on the surface, but they're actually really superficial. Taka doesn't want to put a bassist in the band as it interferes with the low notes that they can hit with their left hand. Nishida is a herring and the band's guitarist. Nishida's name likely comes from the Japanese word for herring, Nishin. They hail from a northern region and are the youngest of 247 siblings, the implication of which being something I have talked about extensively. They don't like having too much attention put on them, which is unusual for a guitarist. They add depth to the band with a sharp and clean sound. People tend to think they're putting on airs and just trying to be cool, but Nishida isn't actually doing that much as people think they're just like that, just naturally kind of cool. Nishida has a good reputation for their guitar techniques, which are regularly written about in a serialized magazine column. The title of said magazine column was actually named, it was something about their guitar beckoning springtime or something. I didn't bother to translate that because it's not that important and whatever I can make up is going to be different than what the actual localization team decides. Kuze is a stonefish who likes to vigorously play on cheap drums. To put it in a good way, it makes for a powerful and wild sound. To put it in a way that's a bit more insulting, the sound is messy and noisy. But with the other members who have been trying to act cool, it fits quite well. Kuze's name might be a play on the Japanese word for stonefish, okoze. He likes clothing, and he came up with the band's outfits. In his free time, he plays Rainmaker with drummers from other bands, set drummers I will talk about later on. Interestingly, this confirms that Inklings and Octolings that use ink aren't the only ones who can play these ink-based sports. I seriously don't think these fish naturally produce ink, so maybe they play with a different rule set. The name of this Rainmaker team was given as Underpass Bass Drum, at least that's how I translate it as, but this may change in the official localization. That's all I got about High Tide Era. I'm sad they didn't come back in Splatoon 2, aside from this one piece of promotional art. I hope they release more songs for a future game. High Tide Era, I miss you. So these last two musicians from Splatoon 1, we know little about, but I'm just going to mention them for the sake of being thorough. DJ Leafish is a musician with only one song attributed to them, Lookin' Fresh, also known as the song from the gear shops in Booyah Base in the first game. Species is unknown, but judging from the name, probably a jellyfish. They're known as DJ Lee F in Japanese, which can be read as DJ Reef in Japanese because that language does not make a distinction between R and L. Bob Dub is a musician who also only has one song, Double Bath, which is a song you hear in the waiting room and equip screens in both games, with the Splatoon 2 version being a remix of it. That song is called Ika Jamaica in Japanese, and if you write that in katakana, the word Jamaica has Ika or squid in it, so you know, more stupid puns. By the name of Bob, we can guess that he's male, and by the album art and Japanese name, Calamarly, he's probably a squid. As good of a name Calamarly is, I can see why we didn't get it in English, because we already used a calamari pun. So that's all for Wave 1, the musicians of the first Splatoon game. Thanks to my patrons for your direct support, and to the rest of you, thanks for watching and enjoying my stuff. I do have more parts planned for the series, and I hope to release them soon, so stick around for that.